Yeah, I agree. So definitely, I can't do much about it. Maybe I'll go to India in a month or couple. So at that time, it'll be here. Yeah. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 John, I was reading uh, a course in Miracles. It's a really a miracle, miraculous book. Good, good. Yeah. So, there are some things, you know. It, it's very nice. I, I, I just somehow, you know, felt like discovered this very lately. So miracle is something, you know, casting away of so-called self. Yeah. So Yeah. John, do you do bhajans every day? I listen to them every day, yeah. In the morning when I'm doing like some morning readings of uh, lineage stuff and uh, then at lunch. Night? Night, no. Okay. Yeah, lunchtime I do the afternoon and I like the video of Maharaj in the ashram. So I'll watch that while I'm eating lunch. And in the early morning, I do the Kakadarate from Guru Purnima. That's on the website. And I listen to that. And then I read like uh, a little bit out of different various books. Various books means like I'm that? No, various books. Here, I can tell you. I'll just look through the Kindle and tell you exactly what I read in the morning. Let's see. Because it's the same books. And then when those books finish, then I'll just pick another book. But uh, oh, and at nighttime, when I go to bed, I read one book, uh, just like a little bit out of that. Right now, I think it's uh, Beyond Freedom is what I'm like reading a little bit out of. Let's see. Morning Meditations. I read Daily Reflection, which is like an AA thing. God Grant Me, which is an AA thing, 24 hours a day, which is an AA thing. Oh. Sri Ramakant Maharaj, spend some time with you. That's the PDF that I put together of Maharaj's like poems and uh, different various things. It's available also for download. Essential Nisargadatta. Uh, what is this? Shankara's Crest Jewel of Wisdom, Das Bodh, Way of the Bird. Oh, nice. Life Recovery Bible, and Ultimate Truth. So those are the ones that I'll read every morning. I read just a little portion of each one. And that's how I start the day. That's right. And when you said about AA, right? I came across this prayer. Oh God, courage to change what must be changed. Certainly to, to accept what cannot be changed and the wisdom to see one from another. Yes. It's it's a bridge between the creator and the creation, this prayer. I yes. So, it's, uh, it's, like it's, a, a, it's a beautiful prayer. I, th I think the whole essence of life's journey is, is reflected in that statement. Thanks for saying that. I love the uh, serenity prayer. Yeah. And uh, John, yeah, daily reflections as well and 24 hours a day. Those are great, great little books. As well, as well as Das Bode, that one is just blows my mind. But. Yes. I don't know, like I discovered Serenity Prayer a week ago. God, it's a, it's a miracle, you know, with the 
heart and mind ponder over it those words hmm just what you felt what you feel after while contemplating on that right it just pure being you know, the highest knowledge then is accept the things i cannot change which is everything basically <laughs> and outside of me and the wisdom to know the difference are i my internal my mm-hmm. thoughts about what's happening are the only thing that can really be modified in any way and acceptance is quite frankly the only way to go through life because as we know the world is a spontaneous projection so if i don't accept it it's only through the mind that thinks and that's why people talk about oh i take my will back or this or that but that's only through mind like this mind created sense of self that seemingly has a will that can be taken back which is not true it just means i'm no longer accepting and the only way to accept is to basically as things are unfolding oh okay so this is how it is and not to accept is absolute insanity because i can say i don't accept it's raining outside but this not to won't change the fact that it's raining outside so if i don't accept it it's crazy you know and you look at everything in life like this again we're talking about the body based illusion and only within the body based illusion can we even talk about acceptance but the concept of knowing that it's the only way you can say you don't accept something is through a mind thought of i don't accept this i don't like this yeah this you know, is in the past you might voice this and say i don't like how hot it is in this room and then you become grumpy but what is it it's internal it's all internal noise yes yes this noise is whatever the self we built up through culture through our upbringing through our experiences so that is the re- not acceptance of what is whether you speak uh, physically whatever is happening around this body mind or you speak beyond or beyond this illusion as what is so the acceptance is negation of this so called self yeah when you know yourself in a real sense then then the reason that there's it's a thought free state is because the thoughts are always about what's happening and how i don't like this or how i do like this and the judging and all that kind of stuff but when you know yourself in a real sense then thoughts cease because they stop chattering about that which is not yes, yes. it is literally like watching a black and white tv and saying wait a minute it it's not color like there i can see that this is absolutely not true when you know yourself in a real sense all the thoughts and ideas and images about form you know are like okay these are entertainment on the screen but it's not true and there's certainly no reason to get involved with it and say oh my god this is so terrible i wish it would stop although from the body perspective you oh uh, you could say well it's raining so i can get out of rain and change the conditions but it doesn't really change the the fact of just being here uh, no matter exactly what. yeah i mean from a body based perspective if you don't like the rain you go inside yes so it gives the impression that you you can you get convinced that you can change conditions but you can't change the overall condition of being a human or or being well, you can know that it's not true you can see through the fallacy of this mm. like it it's such a flimsy structure when you really investigate what is a person and and who is a person and how this person's created even it's silly to watch people who are like oh i would die for this cause but do you understand that the cause that you say you would die for was given to you by someone else outside of yourself they sold you on this idea that you now believe is your own and now you're willing to die for this it's very silly it's empty 
because there's nothing original to you because you're formless. All these are layers on your presence can be easily discarded. Culture, you know, people will say, because I was raised in this culture, this is my belief. Okay, that's what was impressed on you, but that does not have to be your belief. Because you don't need to imbibe it as, oh yes, this, this, is, this is my belief. Because the truth is, there are no beliefs. Belief came along with the body, and you're not body. You remain with your selfless self. This is seen. That's it. Uh, John, here we can look at this body thing, I think, rationally this way. Like, whatever now we see, right, through eyes or through senses, it is not there exactly. Whatever, it, like, suppose through eyes, for seeing the screen in front of me as John, but it, my eyes can't see exactly what exactly is that. I'm seeing the representation of my mind. This representation is coming from the sensory organs. These sensory organs are not really seeing what is are not experiencing what is there exactly. That means whatever I perceive myself as human or whatever I'm seeing world around me, it is not really as it is there. It is the interpretation of the mind or brain, interpretation of the brain. And again, that is, there is a delay in it, always, in this experience. Again, when you know yourself in a real sense, then it won't matter. Like, yep. you, you, can, you can see something really, really tragic happen and say, oh, that's very sad. And you can see something very, very happy happen and, oh, okay, that's nice. But you're not impressed. Yeah. yeah you're I formless. Mean, you don't and, take and, the touch. Exactly. You don't take the touch. And you don't want to get involved in trying to figure out anything. Every time that you have a question or every time that you have a doubt, remain with your selfless self. And you will see the doubt just dissolves. That's it. Like, you know, you say contemplation on what does this mean or what does that mean? Or I'm starting to get the understanding. Okay, remain with my selfless self. And it's gone. Literally, whatever the contemplation is, because when you remain with your selfless self, thought ceases, and you can't even start up thought. <laughs> you know, it's like walking into an old factory that's been shut down for years, and the gears are all like, you know, cobwebbed over and all. You can't even start up thought when you remain with your selfless self. Because... You just, it, it, there's nothing to think about. And if when you do that, when you truly remain, instead of trying to give it to mind, or even, like I said, the books that I read, I don't sit there and like contemplate them. Usually I am observing presence while reading whatever the material is. You can, you can kind of sense that you're, as you Maharaj would call it, reading the reader you can sort of sense that presence, that flow. And it, sometimes it gets very deep and very nice. That's why in the morning it's nice because you're using this body form to experience the bliss or the, the presence, but not getting involved in the words. Just like the, the Shankara jewel of wisdom. It's very specific in details and things like this, but the overall message is, except your selfless self, there's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatma, no Master, nothing is there. They may call it Mbukti, or uh, what do you call it, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, or whatever kind of thing. This is okay, but you don't get involved in that. You're, it's just like, it's like a hit of presence as you're reading this, and then you move on to the next thing. A daily reflection in 24 hours a day can do this too. When you know yourself in a real sense, this, this will impress because you understand that the entire world is a projection on your spontaneous presence. You wrote all this stuff. <laughs> and you wrote it for your own self to sit with yourself and get deeper into yourself in various different understandings in the moment. Because it really is all about you, <laughs> but not the you you appear to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this you, uh, 
you appear to be seems real because of the one of the reason is resistance to the pain and suffering well body you identify with the body and you say this is me when yeah, you know yourself in a real sense me is everything i is everything i is that formlessness that takes form millions of different forms so i is millions of forms and when all those forms are gone i still is again we're sounding like we're speaking bad english i still is <laughs> <laughs> yeah and maybe this i is non personal i right <laughs> it's non personal it's formlessness yeah yeah so space no, says i because it clicked with the body form and said i am somebody i'm alive i am here and then other bodies say and this hereness is labeled john Welcome to the world John. Think about a maternity ward. Presence has taken form and all these empty dead bodies appear to be alive because of presence. And each body is going home. <laughs> with its respective parent because they were expecting a baby and the presence that's the parents and the presence that's the baby is now interacting in a separating kind of atmosphere of there's two or three mom dad and little kid and each parent is taking their baby home but in reality what has happened this lump of goo presence has 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 animated they call it prana whatever it it's it's given life so to speak it is uh and as this body grows this presence that's formless and doesn't grow doesn't age but it looks at body and assumes it's aging because of identification with the body and the first time presence knows i exist is when it clicks with a body and says oh look at a world that means beingness is rubbed with the identity of body and the experiences well beingness doesn't know its beingness until there's a being until there's this click the the space in the room let's say this is just a lump of goo and it's not animated at all like we're doing like a little scientific experiment and it's just sitting here and then the space in the room is somehow able to uh awaken this lump of goo no birth like little birth because it's easier to understand in this way just this goo arises looks around and says oh look at all this and then explores forgetting totally that it's the space because the space didn't know it was space and now suddenly there's a knowingness that has arisen and things to know and it happens so quickly that the spirit so to speak the space is impressed where am i i'm in this place and there are things and i am a thing look at this i can move because it didn't know because space has no idea it's space and now the space leaves this lump of goo and it drops and somebody comes in and says oh look there's a dead body but space is just no longer utilizing this body form it's still there and it might you know that's why we talk about maternity ward presence is continuous just as in a dream if you were to dream about a maternity ward let's say nine women gave birth on the same day and all these babies are there and they're all crying you are providing the power you're giving the life but in reality of course again you wake up all those babies are gone it's not a tragedy because they never were you are not body you are not body you're not going to remain the body body is not your identity all knowledge acquired through using the body form is basically useless but is there as stepping stones to know yourself in a real sense
Would you say uh, only you are? Well, you know, the babies are gone. You just said the babies are. They were. They were well, there. you would wake up. You wake up from your dream. The entire dream world is gone. Can you say that that you are at that point that you you are? Well, your consciousness, whatever you want to call it, in the dream, created this dream world. Then you could say that upon awakening, this dream world is destroyed. But in reality, that's not exactly true either, because it never was. It did appear real for a time. It appeared very real. Okay. For a time being, movies played on the screen. And then... Poof, movies. that's it. But the screen yep. remains. So now the screen is confused itself with the image on it. So the There's image. really no confusion because it's just like in a dream. Your dream characters aren't confused about whether they're real or not real. They just are, and they're just operating because it's just part of the whole manifestation. So, so there's not a confusion. Like if you were to go in your dream, let's say you were lucidly dreaming and you went to one of the characters and said, did you know that you're just an object in my dream? This would be a very silly conversation. When you dream, you see that all these people you're interacting with, and they're, not, they're neither believing they're real, nor are they believing they're not real. They're just there. And when you know yourself in a real sense, this is absolutely the same thing. The people are not there. They're, the bodies are just kind of moving around and, and it's part of the total functioning. I think uh, Nizargadatta Maharaj says the uh, universal consciousness is just part of the play, the universal consciousness. All the people, all the, the, the beings and all, all the birds and all this stuff just moving about within the bubble of illusion, the dream. Long dream, when you wake up, so to speak, you know yourself in a real sense, is finished. And as in a sleeping dream, you don't take anything with you, and it just disappears. And you didn't lose anything. Like when this body it can no longer sustain the essence, there was no loss to presence. Now, presence in other body forms may say, oh, it's very sad John is no longer with us like we did with Maharaj. It's very sad. Maharaj is no longer with us. But the reality is the presence is no longer able to occupy that body because it can't sustain the body. Like when we don't feed and water a plant, and Maharaj says, if you feed a plant, you water a plant, it grows. If you don't give, provide food and water, it shrivels and dies. Well, the body form deteriorates. Of course, it's five elemental body. It's going to deteriorate. Because nothing lasts forever in that way. Anything from the five elements has a time frame because it's born in time. So no, nothing can be real to itself. Because um, it, it, um, it can only be real to you. Nothing's the, real to the I am. It can only uh, it can only be real to that. Uh, well, put it this way: uh, Ger, you've heard of Gurdjieff, right? Uh, he no, okay. was uh, Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff, Russian guy. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, he he made a statement, and it, it always kind of Im impresses me when I think of it. He said, "Life is only, or life is real only then when I am." Yeah, well, I mean, if you are not, then there's no life. The sense of existence is what created the concept of duality, which birthed a world. But I understand that's not an individual basis. It's not like John birthed the world. That's very silly. John is an, is an object within this world that was birthed from I am or I exist or presence, whatever you want to speak about. It's not individual. The I am is not an individual. Presence is not an individual. 
because there are no individuals. So nothing can actually be an individual since the individual is an illusory concept within the bubble of illusion only. So I am is never individual. I am the sense of existence, presence, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it. I exist. No. It can be felt through body form. Using this body, I can sense the sense of presence, the just I, just I, the I am, the whatever you want to call that. You can sense it because of this body form is available, so you can sense this. But that that sensed is not my I am or my presence or my, my meaning John, this guy that is appearing before all these this on this screen, this, this body labeled John, it's not my presence. It's presence. That's why when the body is gone or not, it matters not to presence because presence is presence. It's not a, it's not individual. And when we say remain with your selfless self, you're using this body with a concept of a mind that can create a tension on this sense of existence, this sense of presence, this I am. And what is really happening is presence is remaining with presence and burning off the concepts of someone meditating, someone concentrating, because that, that is just the illusory construct that can easily be burned off. And you remain with your selfless self. When this body is remaining with my selfless self and Rami is remaining with his selfless self, in that body, it is the one selfless self remaining with the selfless self through the concept of duality, erasing the concept of duality because it's so easily burned off by presence to presence, concentrate on the concentrator. But it's not Rami's presence and John's presence. or my presence is stronger than this guy's presence over here, or his presence is like Maharaj, his presence is so strong it glows. No, it's one presence. Now, as presence is reflected within the body-mind, this can be seen and known because there's a misunderstanding. I am this body-mind. I am my thoughts, I'm my body, I'm, I'm in a world, I'm, I'm, all the, I'm gonna born, I'm gonna die, but it's just presence. And that's why all confusion is removed when you remain with yourself as self. Every answer to every problem right here. Oh, the world is so terrible, they're doing terrible things, people are shooting each other all the time, remain here. And you don't even have to say, oh, I, I still have to sympathize. No, there's nothing here. You just remain and it will all dissolve. Because again, the things I cannot change, I can go crazy and say, oh, the world's going insane. And, and, and what good does this do me? How, can I change it? That's why Nizagadatta Maharaj says, look at all the saintly people who have come before. <laughs> and what did they do? <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> Presence. They talk about all the millions of forms being created and destroyed continuously within the presence that you are. Maharaj says it very nicely. Something came out of nothing and returns back to nothing, but it was always nothing. It appeared to be something for a time. And you could see the same with your dream. Lay down at night and sleep. There's a deep sleep. There's no knowingness, no nothing. 
Then suddenly, boom, something, a dream world appears. And there's activities and people. And, and like Mahanar says, the sun, the moon, the rivers, everything is there. And then it returns to nothing. Dream world is finished. There's no gain or loss by what was in the dream. It was always nothing. As Maharaj says, nothing has happened. Nothing will happen. Nothing has been happening. <laughs> there is nothing except yourself and self. Even this dream is not a problem. If you consider this, everything as a dream, it becomes problem when it is taken as real and and uh, <laughs> and very serious about it. It becomes a problem when you say, I am dreaming, rather than just letting the dream be a dream. Yes. Yeah. When you say, I am dreaming, or now I am awake, or I am alive, therefore I am going to die. No. Or I am speaking even. No, speaking is happening. Listening is happening. And just like the moon, will come out tonight when it gets dark, and then tomorrow the sun will come up. The sun does not know that it's providing light. The moon does not know I can't come out when the sun is there, like, or have a conflict and say, you know what, I really want to come out even when the sun is there. Why does he get to have the daytime and I have to have this other time where there's less people to see me? No, there's nothing like this. It's a spontaneous action in the moment. Only the thought, I am thinking, I am speaking, I am awake, I am dreaming, I am walking. No. So when experience is glued with I, then all the drama starts. Gomiji Gomesh. Go the Siddharma Shwa Maharaj story about Gomiji Gomesh stamping the brass door on everything and everybody saying, oh yes, you cannot pass any bills or any laws without the brass door stamp. Then finally, one person says, what in the heck? This whole document is perfect in every way, but it doesn't have the brass door. So they investigate it and they find out that some sneaky sucker back in when there was a little bit of chaos snuck in and started taking credit that everything had to be stamped, the brass door. This I that is not snuck in the back door and says, I am doing these things. It's absolutely false. Because you cannot find the eye anywhere. Where is this eye? Siddhar so Meshwar Maharaj deconstructs every part, the causal body, the great causal body, the, the, you know, and goes through each and every part. And I love how he does it too, because he'll stop at a point and say, aha, so we know it's not the gross body but maybe it's the causal body. Yes, this is where that I is. And then he goes and deconstructs this concept. There is no I. I is a little false Gamiji Gamesh stamp that is not needed. <laughs> and Rami can still function quite nicely without this I. Spontaneous right. action in the moment, doing what needs to be done, and moving along. Without the sense of doership. Yes, John, you know, in the office, sometimes I see unpleasant things. Unlike previous times, they just happen, you know, when there is no interpretation or experience of the situation with the center if that is not there it just happens like you know how you go to a bathroom how motion goes like that things happen whether positive experience or negative experience for the body but the moment this eye comes and says this is unpleasant this is very good then problem starts yes uh, yeah I mean, in this gap, right, you know, I have been not attending the calls, right? This reduced, you know, drastically. So, so. That's good, good. That's when we go against the serenity prayer, like anti-serenity prayer. 
Yeah. I mean, like if your boss were to say to you, hey, Rami, you made a huge mistake on this thing you did yesterday. If there's no Rami there, you'll just say, let me fix that and go about. If there's a Rami there, it's like, uh oh, another mistake. I wonder how he feels about the, you know what I'm saying? You start to create this story. You start to create this drama where there is none. I made a mistake. Okay. And, and that's why in our program, we say, okay, you promptly admit it and make amends and move on. Don't sit there and say, oh my God, this is so terrible. End of the world. No, make amends. Okay. I made this mistake. I'm going to fix it. And I'll try to make it not happen again, if possible. Same thing happened. My boss was not happy about me. So he complained about his boss. And uh, he, did, he knows that I work well. And, uh, but somehow he was not happy with me. Boss, boss. I went to told him, if you are not happy with me, please let me know. I'll go away. So like, I, I don't, you don't need to pay three months of salary or anything. So I'm happy you gave me opportunity. My time is done, I'll go. But next week, that guy who complained, he removed him. That's another story. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I used to like very shake whole, my whole being used to shake. But now, okay. If not, like, I don't know. To speak honestly, life is getting sustained on its own way. Of course. That's how it's always been. You've just pre been pretending that it was tough. That you had to, quote, live a life. And how much 